Hello, I'm Randy Swallow. Welcome to In Your Neighborhood. For the next half hour, we'll talk county issues and District G issues with the man who represents the area, your Commissioner, Jim Gibson. Good afternoon, Commissioner. How are you? Oh, excellent. Good Thank to you. be here. All right, all right. We're here at the Clark County Museum on Boulder Highway in Henderson in District G. This vast district stretches from the central part of the valley through the south part of Las Vegas Boulevard all the way east to Henderson and Boulder City. Here's a quick look in your neighborhood, District G. McCarran International Airport is usually the first and last location most people visit during a trip to Clark County. And the brand new Terminal 3 is the hub for international travel with an expanded Custom and Border Patrol zone. Other features include 15 new gates and some awesome Las Vegas inspired art. Sunset Park is a 320 acre gem, truly the original regional park in Clark County. The County Museum on Boulder Highway is the place for history and heritage in Clark County. The main museum offers permanent and special collections recounting our rich past. And Heritage Street is a stroll that contains a number of painstakingly restored homes and businesses. With facilities both old and new, District G is a place that truly reflects Clark County. Commissioner, we're here at the Clark County Museum, a place I'm sure you're very familiar with. Obviously, the Gibson family has for many generations contributed very much to the history of Southern Nevada. This really is a fantastic place. It is, and it's becoming less and less a secret. We're doing some things now that uh, have needed to be done, but the um, October 1 event was something that drove us to make a decision. We're going to be building an artifact storage facility here. We have artifacts, uh, thousands of artifacts that really need proper storage. They've done a wonderful job of, of uh, cataloging and ensuring that we're preserving what we have, but we need now a special place for that with, that, it, that is environmentally controlled and gives us the ability to really do honor to the things from the past. And this building we're in was the old Grand Canyon Airline Ticket Office out in Boulder City. Tell me what you know about this place. <laughs> well, it was uh, one of those things where it uh, was not a part of a great big airport facility. This was really it. And the commerce that was done here was really fun. Uh, you, by the name, we got an opportunity to get up in the air and see some incredible nature, uh, as, as well as the dam and other parts of uh, the lake and the areas that were uh, around the Grand Canyon. And it was just an exciting place to go. If you ever got an opportunity, you really wanted to do it. And when we had the opportunity to get a hold of this historic building, it was the, we snatched it up. It was the right thing to do. There are homes that belong to many of the pioneer families uh, that lived in the very downtown area or even the town site area of Henderson. Uh, this is a, a really important spot. If you went, really want to get a sense of what Las Vegas was like or what Henderson was like uh, 50, 60, 70, and 80 years ago, come here because we have buildings that were built and operating back then. And just before you got here, there were 70 school kids out here, which the Markel Patton tells me that's repeated many, many times throughout the school year. This is truly still a place where kids come on field trips and really learn things. Well, kids love Mark. He's so full of information. He's devoted himself to our history here in this county, and he's a, an educator. He really knows how to help these kids uh, quench their appetite for something that they can only imagine, and he helps their imagination really run wild with them after he helps them understand what the history is that is represented here. And Mark, of course, if people don't know who we're talking about, if they don't watch the Pawn Stars, they would know that Mark Hall Patton is an amazing historian, a, a, a great asset to the community and to this museum. That's exactly right. Commissioner, let's talk a little bit about the street that fronts us out here, Boulder Highway. That's one of the oldest, uh, the Boulder Highway was built in 1931, which I'm sure you knew that already. 36,000 uh, vehicles travel along Boulder Highway every single day. You're on the RTC and the RTC is reimagining Boulder Highway. Talk to me about that. Well, Boulder Highway uh, isn't any longer, doesn't operate any longer like a highway. Um, we have uh, intersections, signalized intersections, uh, all along the highway now. Uh, 
when I was a kid, I remember my dad putting a water bottle on the hood ornament of our car so that we could make it into Las Vegas from Henderson. <laughs> uh, and that seemed, well, it was a long time ago. Um, so what we've got to do is we've got to really look seriously is, uh, at what is happening here. The bus route extends all along Boulder Highway into Boulder City and back. Uh, it serves uh, the general commercial areas that it passes through. Water Street is served uh, in the old part of Henderson by the bus route. Um, the uh, College of Southern Nevada, the community college, is served. Uh, we have students at uh, Nevada State College. Uh, those two institutions have growing uh, student populations. It's really important for us to offer people from across the valley the opportunity to get to the classes, the programs, and the experiences that they need in higher education. So all of that becomes really critical when you start looking at Boulder Highway. And uh, Boulder Highway, um, unfortunately um, is the place where a lot of pedestrian lives are lost and have been lost over the years and so uh, we've looked at the bus rapid transit and how we might reposition it and serve in a different way what's happening along boulder highway we're looking to get uh, design business enterprises uh, active along the boulder highway maybe repurpose some of what is there and bring new industry and new commercial opportunities to the area it will always be kind of a, a spinal roadway it's a, it's a, a backbone roadway uh, and our and an important arterial but it is no longer a highway and uh, as a result we really need to reimagine it as something that its name doesn't suggest so we're working on that at rtc and each of the uh, agencies. The city of Henderson is working hard on a redesign uh, to accommodate uh, our transit. Uh, in Clark County, we're working with uh, the city of Henderson and the city of Las Vegas on the other end of us to do something that makes a lot of sense all the way up to Fremont Street. I know you've had a number of public meetings and taken much public input on what everything we've just talked about. What types of things have the public come up to you with that maybe you didn't think about or that now you really are getting serious with? Well, there's a lot of dependency on transit. Uh, you, you go to the larger cities in the country and in the world and buses are running on regular routes that serve large segments of the population. We can't really say that we serve large segments of the population, but the people that need the bus are large in number. So we, we've got to work harder to make bus transit an option for people who really don't have other alternatives. And so uh, we, we have heard from them that uh, many of them wish they could live closer to Boulder Highway. Um, but they need to be able to get to work. They need to be able to get to the stores, to the doctors, and to the other places that families and individuals need to get. And so it, it has become interesting to us that more and more input is coming to us in our public outreach experiences about the personal lives that people live kind of in this corridor or wish to be able to live in this corridor. We didn't used to receive that much kind of a residential perspective. We, we mostly heard from the business community that borders the Boulder Highway really from one end to the other. Um, and now you can add to that those who are really dependent, who live in the area but who are dependent upon a transit option to move them around the valley. <coughs> Commissioner, let's shift gears a little bit. Job fairs, gosh, that is something you have been all over it. I think I've been to all four of your job fairs. Thankfully, we're still employed by the county, but I know you had a fair, pretty small one at Whitney, a bigger one out of the convention center or across the street from where you used to work on Water Street, then on the Enclave, and the last one at, was amazing. At the government center, 1,200, 1200 job seekers, 90 employers. Absolutely incredible turnout. Um, I kind of start with the employers and the reason I do is that we have plenty of people who are searching for an upgrade to their employment or who are searching for work. Um, but what you need is a, a group of employers who are really satisfied that they're getting prospects that could fill their needs at these job fairs and we heard that over and over and over again. The, People who showed up were qualified for work, they were anxious to work, they knew how to sit down and be interviewed, their resumes were helpful. 
Uh, and now with technology, we have um, many of the employers show up with the ability to do a background check on the spot over their telephone. Um, and we're hoping for more of that over time. This, this job fair distinguished itself in that it had, as you say, close to 90 employers who were searching for people. 1,200 plus people showed up looking for work. Um, but we were able to do it all inside. Uh, it, it was a massive undertaking. We used the rotunda at the government center, the hallway that connects the rotunda to the pyramid portion of the building, which is our cafeteria, and we used every square inch of all of that space to accommodate people. Uh, we've heard now from many employers who've indicated to us that they made job offers, uh, that in, in some cases people are, have started to work already. And that's, I think that's the thing that technology ought to allow us. And so our focus has been not just recruiting the very best, both private and public sector employers, employers and we had both uh, in this last uh, experience, but we've got to get them interested in and doing what they can do to take advantage of the technology that's available so that people who are able to figure out how to get there um, are able to find real employment that day. And we have, we have follow-up interviews already scheduled. We have, as I said, we have people that are at work. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to know that, that hundreds of people actually fi found employment a couple of weeks ago. And that, that is really exciting. And it's what we've got to commit ourselves to. And remember, this isn't just people who are unemployed. This is people who need an upgrade in their employment or they need to change the environment in which they work. Um, and I think we're beginning to meet that need. There's a lot more need out there on the employer side and on the employee side. But uh, the uh, things that I was told by the folks who showed up looking for work was really gratifying. They're finding opportunity. And, and in some cases, I received uh, an email from a fellow who had said, I've just dropped out. It just didn't seem worth it anymore. Then I got into this experience, and oh my goodness, looks like I might have an opportunity. And I, I, that's what we need to provide for people. And that, you know, that hope that they have from experience like this changes the way they interact in the community. So it strengthens the entire community to give people hope who have lost it. And is that something we're going to, could, you're going to try and do more in 2020? So we try to do two a year. We try to do a spring and a fall. We partnered with uh, Commissioner Segerblum, who has an adjoining district. Uh, and uh, we intend to reach out across the community and continue to do what we do. We, we need to find places that will accommodate large groups. And the government center works. I mean, the acoustics are not the best in the rotunda. Uh, we. Uh, know that not every one of the job fairs is going to be of the same uh, attendance that we had here uh, this past couple of weeks or two weeks ago. But we know also that we can begin to, or we have been very selective about the employers. And uh, Job Connect, work, Workforce Connections have helped us get the right employers in place. So we need to continue, and they're asking for us to continue to do the two a year. So we'll do something in the spring. And next fall, we'll do another one. We hope both of them will be really equally successful. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. We must take a short break. We continue In Your Neighborhood with District G Commissioner Jim Gibson. Stay tuned. <laughs> I think I'd be locked up right now if it weren't for the harbor. Fighting drug or alcohol use and changes in behavior are all warning signs that a youth may need help. I got in a fight and got expelled from school and my mom took me to the harbor for help. The harbor is a safe haven for troubled kids and their families. The goal is to give them resources so problems don't escalate. We know kids in crisis can become adults in crisis. Prevention and early intervention work. They help me get my life back on track. Sometimes you just need a fresh start. The harbor offers hope and second chances. District G is home to the Clark County Museum. This place provides a comprehensive look back at our rich history with buildings and homes painstakingly restored to their original splendor. The main museum facility offers permanent and ever-changing exhibits and is open nearly every day of the year. It's the best bargain in the valley. Just a buck for teens and seniors and two dollars for adults. The County Museum is located at 1830 South Boulder Highway, and that's where we are. We're talking District G issues with your Commissioner, Jim Gibson. Commissioner, we've seen you out also doing a, a 
different outreach approach with your coffee chats. You've gone into coffee houses and you know met people, which that happens quite often, but you sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, give them schedule appointments, all your assistants are there, give them five or ten minutes to chat down and, and get their issues face-to-face. -face. How is that approach working? Well, it's really worked well for us. Uh, we have uh, a coffee with the commissioner and Mayor McManus from Boulder City on December 11th from 9 to 11, I think, at the Coffee Cup. Uh, a world-renowned restaurant. Uh, it's been on television and they have uh, terrific food over there. We're fortunately, uh, we're not going there to eat, although I probably will figure out a way to eat before I leave there. Um, what we've done that's a little different is instead of uh, just addressing a group of uh, constituents and taking a few questions uh, in front of the group, uh, we schedule them. So when a constituent shows up and they want to talk about a specific project, in this case, uh, whether it's with the mayor or with the commissioner or both, uh, we ask them to sign up and then we schedule them in and we sit at a table with uh, the liaison from my office, Blanca Vasquez, and uh, we hear their concerns and we try to, to respond to them, but we make a note of whatever it is we need to do in the way of research or if there are things, that jobs that we need to undertake or work that we need to undertake to meet a need, uh, we make a note of that and then we report back to them on the progress that we've made or we get them answers to questions that they ask. And we found that this is a really effective way to get to the bottom of things. We can spend a few minutes with people, learn what their real concerns are, and then go back and have a real focused approach to get, getting to the bottom of things that are on people's minds. Commissioner, I don't know if this is something that has come up during your coffee chats, but I know it's an issue in District G and across the valley are party houses, illegal party houses, short-term rentals, which are implicitly illegal in Clark County. Maybe it's a little bit different of a situation in, in your District G because part of your district is, of course, Henderson, where given the right circumstances, they're legal in the city of Henderson. Talk to me about how big of a problem it is in District G, or if it is. Well, it, it's a problem in every district. Not nearly as large, as you suggest, in the unincorporated part of Clark County that lies in District G. Henderson has the issue, it's facing them, they're dealing with it by ordinance. In Clark County, uh, we have neighborhoods where it is reported to us in testimony that came before us at the County Commission meeting, uh, four or five houses in a neighborhood that have been purchased by people who are in the business of operating party houses. Then they've been modified without building permits and without safety inspections or code inspections uh, to, to go from a four or five bedroom home to say a 10 bedroom home so that they can accommodate party groups. Uh, and, and when they have the parties, it's not just a, like a few more people next door to you if you're a neighbor, but the, the noise, the, the loud music, uh, the commotion. We even have had violence uh, at some of those parties, and we can't tolerate that. Uh, in the past, we've fined the uh, owner of the home, but if they don't pay, then we lien the house, and eventually, if it sells or when it sells, we collect uh, the, um, the fee, the fine that was assessed but unpaid. We changed the law so that we can add it to the tax bill so that uh, if there is a delinquency on the tax uh, piece of what the homeowner owes, we also have a delinquency on the fine and we can collect it at a tax lien, uh, as a tax lien would be collected. So the same processes and procedures and timing are in place and we're imagining that that will get us a lot further because it no longer would, would someone who is operating these Ill illegal activities in Clark County have the luxury of just waiting till they sell the house. So we're, we're aggressively moving on it. It's a big concern to us. And Las Vegas Valley is a very different place from so many communities around the country. We have more hotel rooms at each of the intersections on Las Vegas Boulevard, Spring Mountain and Flamingo and Tropicana, uh, than they have in major cities around the country. And uh, soon we'll have close to 170,000 rooms. The investment in the bricks and mortar of these hotel rooms um, is especially important to this region and this area. The tax revenues that come and help lift some of the tax burden from our local residents is something that is met in part by the tourists that comes to Las Vegas. So we have a 
we have to be very careful about how we proceed down this road. There is continued discussion about how we might, um, what we might do to our code, but it's premature to say how that's going to work out. The cities seem to have been uh, focused similarly, but they've moved ahead. Uh, we'll see how all that goes. I think there are some adjustments to what's been presented to them that will be coming forward in the next month or two. Uh, meanwhile, we continue to study the issue and we're going to act on it, but this is a major concern to us. The, the health, the survivability, the sustainability of our neighborhoods is at risk to the extent that uh, the I experience in the neighborhood undermines quality of life for people who, are who purposefully bought in an area that they deem to be quiet enough for their needs and situated in a place uh, and in a condition that would help them raise their families or live their lives the way they wish to. That's all being interrupted without any uh, legality around it. And so we're, we're, we're serious about this. We're going to enforce our law and we're going to impose fines and we're going to collect them. So let's shift gears again a little bit and talk about one of your favorite neighborhoods, I'm sure, Whitney, just a few miles up Boulder Highway from here. Great community center. You're making it even better. Aquatic center and a splash pad being built there. That's, That's right. going to be a well-utilized in, in that community. We've had a swimming pool there, but uh, over the course of time, the um, uh, people's interests have changed. And it has occurred to us that rather than just maintaining a swimming pool for a relatively few number of people who visit us each day in the months when an outdoor pool works, um, it might make s better sense to try and upgrade the aquatics offering. And so we're, we're doing a splash pad. The splash pads that we used to do, that we did when I was uh, in Henderson were very, very popular. Uh, the ones that we have in the county are popular today. Uh, the aquatics facility that we're going to do will bring us the opportunity to have a pool that is configured with the tubes and the slides and all the rest of it. It'll be enormous fun for the kids and the families and the people who live in, in District G over in the Whitney area and, and from other parts of the valley. We're really excited to be able to upgrade uh, what we have over there. It is one of the very, very busiest uh, community centers and uh, the team that works over there is an incredible team, Al Martinez and uh, his entire group. Uh, we've done everything, as I say, from recreational things to um, uh, job fairs in the area. We always have a turnout. People know that the community center is there. It really is, in so many ways, the heartbeat of the community in that area. And so uh, come out and enjoy the uh, movie in the park, come to our trunk or treat, and plan to be using our aquatic center when we get it up. Commissioner, you talked about parks and how they've evolved and you built many, many parks here in Henderson when you were the mayor here for 12 years and then take even our oldest park or one of our oldest parks, Sunset Park, Pickleball. I mean, who would have we? Who would have thought a few years ago pickleball wasn't on anybody's radar? Twenty-four court pickleball facility coming to Sunset Park. Well, it, uh, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in, in the country. Um, the facility we're building will be available for recreational use, uh, but it will also be configured and equipped in a way that it'll meet the needs for tournament play. And we're excited to be able to get that uh, up and operating. We've been studying it and designing it and working with the pickleball community and uh, with other interested people uh, for a, over a year now. Uh, we expect that that facility will be uh, commenced and completed next year. And we're very excited to get it online. Um, there will be shade structures and 24 courts, as you say. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll reserve four of the courts for special play. Um, <clears throat> the lighting and the shade structures that will you know, serve over the ble they'll be there for over the bleachers and things. All of that will be the, the exact kind of experience that we think we need to have here. We've looked at pickleball successful pickleball complexes around the country. We think we've taken the very best from them. Uh, so we're really excited to do that. And this, this really updates Sunset Park. I mean, beautiful park, beautiful uh, facilities. But this is something brand new. Uh, the uh, disc golf course is uh, right next door to it. Uh, on the other side of the park, we have the uh, sand volleyball courts. We've done a lot of work there, and we continue to do more work to upgrade those facilities. 
Um, we've resurfaced tennis and basketball courts in the area. So this is a very important park. It's the, maybe the most important regional park that we have in the valley. And we're committed to keeping it up, keeping it clean, and making certain that the family experience continues to reside there. I think we should do our next in your neighborhood there next year, and you and I'll play yeah, a little pickleball. Yeah, we'll that? <laughs> That'd be good. All right. We must take another short break. We'll continue in your neighborhood with District G Commissioner Jim Gibson. Stay tuned. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. District G is home to our most popular regional park, Sunset Park. For more than 60 years, this place has been the hub of all types of athletic activity, from baseball and basketball to volleyball and disc golf. The most recent expansion helped preserve the last sand dunes in the valley with a network of trails for walkers, runners, and bikers. Dozens of large-scale events such as the Renaissance Fair are annual staples, and Sunset Lake provides a habitat for birds and fish and a relaxing place for visitors. Sunset is located on Sunset and Eastern in District G. And speaking of District G, we're talking with the man who represents the area, your Commissioner Jim Gibson. Commissioner, there's been a number of roadway improvements in your district along Eastern, along Maryland Parkway, and something that's coming up very soon is the renaming and reconfiguring a bit of Swenson, University Center Drive. This is going to help traffic in that area and in, in and around that area very much. It, it really will. When you consider that we have uh, 25,000 you know, students and faculty and visitors on that campus, uh, it is an important um, diamond in our valley. And the county and the uh, university are working very hard to do what we can do to support the surrounding areas, to um, enhance the university experience for the student. Uh, and it was appropriate to name a street that runs right next to and really into the uh, university uh, uh, University Drive, so it gives us the ability to really point out to the, everyone that that's where our university is. And so we're excited to be able to work with UNLV. They've spent a lot of time reimagining their own drive there and how maybe it ought to be configured differently so that it'll really help them uh, move people in and out of the university the way it ought to, but recognize them as much as anything else. We, as a county, we've always tried to keep Tropicana, Maryland Parkway, and Swenson up and accommodating the needs of the university, but this will give us more ability to do that as, we've, as we work through the future issues that will come up. And that'll just be one part of the improvements along Maryland Parkway all the way from McCarran to downtown? Yeah, we've, we've already reimagined Maryland Parkway over a couple of years of work. Um, and uh, as we work on bus rapid transit and as we work on the neighboring development there, we get more of a, of a university slash transit oriented kind of experience along Maryland Parkway. That'll change the nature of the community there. We think it'll make it safer. It will make it more complementary to the university and to the other things that are there among themselves. Uh, we've worked to improve the roadways there and we're doing that really year after year after year. So our commitment remains firm there and we're excited for the university. All right, I know we could talk for another half hour or so, but it's always a pleasure catching up with you, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Thank you. That wraps up this edition of In Your Neighborhood. Thanks to our friends at the County Museum and to Commissioner Jim Gibson for taking time to tell us about the area he calls home and represents as your elected official, District G. If you have any questions about this show or ideas for upcoming segments in your neighborhood, call me. I'm at 702-455-6357 or send an email to rsw at clarkcountynv.gov. Thanks for tuning in to Clark County Television. On behalf of our production staff, I'm Randy Swallow. We'll see you again next time in your neighborhood. <laughs>